Welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're going to be hopping back into the CRJ and having a look at the Cockpit Master CDU and see the progress that we've made with it and how we've set it up inside of SPAD next. Now keep in mind a bunch of this is going to change as the new alpha builds come out and the events are directly added. But in the meantime, we went ahead and we slid in a few things ourselves and I wanted to share that with you in case you wanted to jump ahead at this time. So let's go ahead, jump in the CRJ and get started. For those that just want to grab this, where do I find the snippet? Remember, you come into spad.next, click on CDU. Remember, this is in the alpha. So this is starting with 0.24. Everything after about 0.20 uh, can only be downloaded in the alpha. That said, you have to be in this alpha to get the Cockpit Master CDU anyway. Again, this is an early alpha snippet. A lot of this is going to change when we get the event keys and other things updated. So we jump into online snippets. We're going to go to the Boeing CDU complete device. You're looking for the Elvar Cockpit Master CDU CRJ Early Alpha CDU1 map. So this is the one that I've done. This is the one we're going to be talking about. It's for the CRJ. You go ahead, you click OK. And then you replace all events. So again, this is going to replace the events on the left CDU away from the standardized keying because I went through and I remapped it. And we're going to cover that right now. We've got our CDU set up as well as we've got SPAD.next running. And you can see inside of SPAD.next the configuration and the way things are handled. Now, generally what happens when you set this up, there is a default snippet. And the goal of the default snippet is to manage this for us and automatically change this information. So by default, when we come in, we're going to have the spad.next, select CDU left, CDU right. When it first powers up, it actually says waiting for data, and then the data comes across. And so in this case, it's already picked up from the CRJ that there's a left and a right CDU. You would select one of the two CDUs. So CDU2, waiting for data, that is the right side CDU. And we've got buttons. And of course, none of these buttons are going to function right now because these use all the standard CDU keys. So this is the part that's coming in future updates that's going to be really slick. You won't have to modify these events unless something's really different because this will automatically link to a standardized key. And for the numpads... And the letter pads and the space, the delete, the slashes, the clears, this is going to be real helpful. And the LSK keys because the line select keys, because we don't have to worry about it, right? Those things will be consistent. Now, what we may have to do is going to be working on some of these buttons and remapping some of those events. So we're going to see where that's going to go. On the first line select key, if you hold it for longer than one second, this is where I moved the device CDU to go back to the main screen. So when we held that button down for longer than one second, it actually jumped back to the main CDU screen uh, so that we would see that. Now, again, press the line select one, waiting for data, pops it in, pulls in the data. Now, we did this because the default has it on menu. But I wanted to put something else on the menu key other than that, which I'm rarely going to use. So I just put it on hold for one second on line select one. Now, for the CRJ, uh, I didn't want to wait so I, for the mappings to all show up for default. So I kind of jumped the line and started putting these onto the buttons. So for line select keys... The ASCRJ MCDU1 LSK1 left, as long as I change that variable to a 1, then it's going to go ahead and it's going to press the event and it resets instantly to 0 and it presses the button. But I decided I also wanted 
the key to move in the UI, which will also make the click sound. And then, of course, like always, we have to delay the execution and then set it back to zero. So that's what we assigned to all of our line select keys, copied, pasted. And then on the right hand side, we're doing it for all the right keys. Copy, paste, replace. For the number pad, same thing. Everything is pressing the key plus uh, it's going to send the animation events. We've got the plus minus key, the zero and the period. And then for all the letters, we broke it down the exact same way. And then we came in here to the space, the delete, the slash, and the clear keys. Those are pretty straightforward and it makes all kinds of sense in how those line up. Where things get a little bit different is where we started to map these buttons, the menu buttons. And so for that, you're going to see that on lots of these buttons, we've gone ahead and we've mapped two events, one for a short press and one for a long press. So what you'll see is the first button on the pad is the message button. So for a knit and ref button on the CDU 737, we went ahead and for a short time, it's press the index key, so the button right below the message key. So generally the index key is similar to an init ref key on a 737 CDU. So we felt like this was a good fit. And the message key, which eh, you may or may not use a lot, we decided to put that on that button, but when held for a long period of time, that will bring up the messages. So that took care of messages and index. For the menu key, there's actually a couple of menus on the panel. So there's an MCDU menu and there's an MFD menu. And so for the short press, we put the MCDU menu. So it'll switch to the MCDU menu. And the long press will take us to the MFD menu therefore giving us all the same flexibility and being able to control those menus. N1 limit page, just because of where it aligns with the MCDU, is we change that to give us the radio control on the short press. And then on the long press, it's the MFD data key. So if we hold it down, it changes the MFD to the data page. If we hold it down again, changes back. So it works the same way as the MFD data. So for the root button, again, what are we doing most? Root flight plan. So we decided that the short press would take us to the flight plan button and the long press was gonna take us to the secondary flight plan button. Then we've got our legs page below that. And so there is a legs page. So for the short press, we went ahead and we put the legs page. And for the long press, we decided to bring up our direct intersection page. So if we hold down legs, we'll get the direct page. If we tap it, we'll get our legs page. On our fix page, since there is a fix page on the unit, we went ahead and we mapped the fix page to the fixes. There is no secondary function on that button. The easiest thing to do for next page and previous page was go ahead and map those. That made sense. Previous page, next page, those mapped previous and next. On the MCDU, there's an up arrow and a down arrow. So I went ahead and I put the up key as the long press on the previous page and on the next page we put the down arrow as the long press so we went ahead and we put the climb button for our performance page so again if we hit the climb button it'll take us to the performance menu now we don't have anything on the secondary function for the departure arrival key 
made sense. One-to-one -one mapping, nothing on the second side. For the cruise page, since there is no cruise page, uh, that's where we remapped the MFD advance key. Hold, we mapped the hold key. So a one-to-one -one mapping there. And VNAV, since it is a descent profile, we decided that descent and VNAV would go on the same button. So if I want to get to the VNAV page, I can go ahead and I can use the descent. Now, obviously there is a VNAV climb, a VNAV cruise, and a VNAV descent. So we use the descent to take us to the VNAV menu. Progress, again, maps one-to-one -one with the progress key. And so now we've gone ahead and we've been able to easily map our information to the unit. And of course, execute is execute. It's real simple. Everything's great. We've got our route. So we can go ahead and start punching in our routing. Everything is instantaneous and fast. Go to our departure. We're going to take off of 2 2 right. And we're going to use the EWR4. We're going to go ahead and execute that. So let's go ahead and jump into our legs page. So you can see then vectors, right? And now we're going to go ahead and jump in to our departure arrival. Press it again. Let's go to our arrival. We're going to do the capital five arrival. MyVoc transition. And we're going to go ahead and use runway 25 and we'll use the Zulu and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go from uh, Zolti uh, we'll do Advos go from Advos execute go back to that route and so now you can see there's our our flight plan route if we want to look at it in the legs we could see we've got that vector then we have a discontinuity and then to MyVox. So obviously now we could go in and start punching in the rest of our legs. This is just to get you going, see what it is that it's capable of doing. Again, right now, this is early in the alpha. Uh, this is going to change dramatically as the new functionality and the addition of other aircraft come in from Microsoft Flight Sim. As always, if you like this, go ahead, hit the like button. If you got some ideas, drop those in the comments. Uh, if you've been enjoying the content, please hit the subscribe key. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.